Hi there. In this video, I want to show you how to uh, control your Niagara system with a texture, right? So normally you just, yeah, change one float param and it would, um, yeah, change the entire system based on that one single flow value. But there's also a great way to, yeah, basically sample a texture and use it anywhere in your system uh, to control parameters with, right? So what I did here is basically, it's it's a very simple system. You've seen this a couple of times, uh, definitely on my channel, but um, both the scale and both the noise are being controlled by a texture. And it's just this texture, it's just a stroke, right? And I move this stroke from left to right through the system. And yeah, in this video, I'm just going to show you how to set it up and how to get this bit working and how you can use it in your system anywhere, really. Right. So let me get rid of the, the sample texture node. If I do that, you'll see it's just... It's a very simple system, right? You can check one of my earlier videos if you want to recreate something like this. All right, let's add the sample texture node back in again. Let's set it to the top because this is one of the first things that we want to do on each frame. The sample texture node has two parameters, a texture and a two vector. We can sample the texture at a certain point in X and Y with this UV parameter. Right now it's sampling from 0 for X and 0 for Y, which means it's sampling the top left corner of the texture. Let me just drag in a texture. So right now we are at 0 and 0, which means we're sampling right around here, top left. What we want to do is we want to sample the whole texture from left to right and from top to bottom all in one go. The way to do that is by grabbing the position of the particles X and Y and using those positions to sample our texture width. So the way to do that is basically by breaking open the vector 2D. Now we have two float values. And what I want to do is I want to multiply. Well, actually, first I want to go into vector space again because, uh, yeah, the particle's position is a vector. So three floats. So we are going to make a float from a vector. Now we're back in vector space. And I'm just going to multiply the position. of the particles with my own arbitrary number, dot zero zero one. So it's within the right scale again, probably. Cool, I'm going to do the same for the Y. So make a vector, multiply, vector, grab the position of the particles from float and set it to zero, zero, 1. Now if we go to our scale mesh size, basically I've initiated a very simple curve so, uh, which is set to the normalized age. So at the beginning of their lifetime, they, uh, they grow. And at the end of their lifetime, they shrink back down again. And we can scale this whole curve. Yeah. With, with an arbitrary value. So dot zero five works for me. And what I want to do is because this node samples a texture, but it also stores 
what it sampled in a new parameter called output module sampled color. And we can use this, uh, this parameter anywhere in our system, anywhere that we want, but it is a linear color. And this is a float, but we can make a float linear, make float from linear color, right? And instead of just a white value, we are going to grab our output sampled color. That leaves us with nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, you can you can actually you can actually see it a bit right here on the top side. Hopefully, YouTube allows you to see that as well. So I'm just gonna whoop, increase the scale. Right here we go. That kind of worked. Can even go further. And maybe let's not directly get the sampled color, but I want to multiply it with another value. So multiply float. And for the first float, we are going to make from linear, make float from linear color, grab the output. Here we go. And set it to dot zero five. And yeah, here we go. Right now, we are sampling the texture and we are using that texture somewhere else to scale, yeah, to basically scale our meshes with. But right now we don't have a lot of control, right? We have these two values that we can kind of mess around with. So this determines the scale or the tiling of your texture, but I also want to offset it, right? So um, yeah, I want to add another number so I can have them scroll from top to bottom or what I am going to do is instead of multiplying the vector, I'm just going to add two vectors, add vector, and do the whole thing again. So multiply vector, grab the position of the particles, make from float, vector from float, dot zero zero one, and then we can add a value. And if we add a number, you can see we are changing the position of the sample texture. Now, if I, um, make basically if I automate this first vector number then it's going to automatically scroll from top to bottom right so we can automate this float by using the normalized looped H and there we go it is scrolling from top to bottom now Actually, we can multiply the normalized looped H with another number to control the speed, right? So we have two things going for us. We have the offset, we've automated the offset, and we can control the scale of our sampler. So right now the noise strength is the same everywhere, but we can use the same trick. So float from linear color, grab our texture. Actually, multiply float and then grab the position. Uh, actually, whoops, float from linear color, output sampled color, and then just multiply it by an arbitrary number, like 500 or 900, I don't know, whatever suits you. So right now, 
uh, yeah, there's just noise happening where the texture is sampled. If we turn off the scale mesh size, we actually let me add another scale mesh size just so we can see it better. Factor from float dot zero five. Here we go. So the noise is just yeah, kind of moving through the system based on uh, the yeah the sample texture. Isn't that nice? So yeah, that's kind of how that works. I hope uh, I hope this uh, explanation was uh, <laughs> was good, <laughs> and that you can at least uh, uh, yeah work with it. All right, so yeah, that's it. Um, bye.